Okay, welcome to my laboratory. This is uh, continuing the preliminary testing of the Akula um, three volt perpetual flashlight thing here. So I still don't have the. Sorry about the shadows. I still don't have the um, DC DC converter chip, the uh, MC 34063A. Uh, has not yet arrived, but it'll go in that socket. I've got all the rest of the parts assembled, though. Uh, I had to approximate some of the resistor values. I'm using a 200 ohm instead of a 180 ohm there. And then these three 1 ohm resistors make the 0.33 ohm that's listed on the schematic diagram. Uh, the 500 and some odd picofarad capacitor is uh, made by connecting these two 1 nanofarads in a series and uh, then everything else is like that. So these are the two sets of wires that go will go to the uh, transformator, the coils inductor. This pair, the green and white pair, are the pair that go to the 27 millihenry winding I'm operating upside down here, so please excuse me if I go out of range sometimes. So, as I was saying, this is the pair of wires that goes to the 27 millihenry winding of the transformer. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm just basically testing stage by stage. I already showed in a previous video the output stage uh, with the inverter driving the MOSFET on the oscilloscope. But right now, what I want to show is the behavior of the DC circuit that comprises the LEDs and some resistors and capacitors in there. The, this chip is not in the socket, of course. Okay. So here I have, uh, f this is connected to my little power supply and it's set to f produce 4 volts right now, not 3, 4 volts. Okay. So I'm going to plug that in to the power input terminals to the board. All right, so we have the 4-volt power supply hooked up, and now I'm going to just short together these two wires that would go to the 27 millihenry side of the inductor. And I guess you can see that the LEDs, the green LEDs, light up quite well when I do that. And when I break this connection here, those LEDs stay on for a little while. I'll make the connection. LEDs come on brightly. I break the connection and they stay on for a little while. Let's see if I can... Yeah, that might be better. I turn off the overhead light. So I make the connection. LEDs come on, break the connection. They stay on for a while and fade. All right. So if I make the connection, the LEDs stay on. Now if I remove the power and I still hold this connection, the LEDs stay on. There's no batteries in there, people. Now if I break this connection, the LEDs fade. See them fade? But then when I make this connection again, oh, I waited too long, I guess. Okay, let's try it again. Let's plug in the power. Make the connection. The LEDs come on. Break the connection. And they fade. Make the connection. They come on. Break the connection. And they fade slowly. Make the connection. And they come on break the connection, and I'll remove the power supply, and they stay, they, and then I make the connection again, and the LEDs come on bright, and then they fade, and then I make the connection again, and the LEDs come on, no power is attached, fade, make the connection, LEDs on, and fade slowly, okay, so What's happening here is that, I think what's happening here is that the capacitors charge up and keep the LED lit 
for a little while. And even with the supply disconnected, those LEDs can still be made to light by making and breaking the connection where the small end of the coil goes. So this is using energy that's stored in the two big capacitors, I think. All right, thanks for watching.